<laughs> hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games, and welcome to a new Let's Play. It's called The Visitor, story and graphics by you know who. Do you? All right, as Pink would say, let's get this vampire party started. Once upon a time, there lived a shy and lonely vampire. Bats. Snug in his coffin, deep in the bowels of the castle, Bella shifts, shifted on a feather mattress, set atop fairly fresh Romanian earth, and wondered if it was even worth getting out of bed. He heaved a sigh. It's not like I have a whole lot to do here in the castle except read business reports of Vampire Business Weekly and deal with my family. Oi. What the... Oh crap! Uncle Cheney found the Toccato and Fugue again! I guess I need to find some place better to hide that sheet music! It's so sheet! The, the library. Damn it all! Can't he just leave that score alone? Uncle Cheney knows Uncle Boris, Uncle Vincent, and Uncle Peter really hate that particular piece of music! Oh, don't. If Vincent Price is in it, I can't do a Vincent Price accent. I can't do a precious. On second thought, that cranky bastard probably plays it on purpose! I'd better get upstairs before my uncles throw a tantrum. I really don't want to deal with three screaming saucers on a rampage again. Blah! Stupid uncles with the stupid psychic powers over stupid animals. I hate being a vampire. I can call a few animals too, damn it. But you don't see me letting all my wildlife at my command run loose in the halls every time I lose my temper, do you? He sighed heavily. Family could be such a pain in the ass. Chapter 1, in which there is a visitor. Damn it all, if it's not one thing, blah, it's another. Always oh, in an emergency. The pipes are leaking hair. The power doesn't work. The skylight is letting in too much sunlight. The not enough moonlight. Oh. If they hate it so much, why are they still here, family or not? The damned freeloaders, the lot of them. Bella rolled his eyes. Wonderful, my stomach is complaining too. <laughs> Stupid liquid diet. I'm thrilled that my family is here for me, but Mother Knight! I am so tired of breakfasting on old wrinkly men. It's no wonder I've begun to look older than I should. Oh, I used to be beautiful. Damn, what I wouldn't give for a pint of something fresh and under 50. Is that what vampires watch, fresh and under 50? Crap! I hope that's not another idiot to door-to-door -door salesman. I have anxiety issues. <laughs> a second thought, fresh young salesman would definitely be a nice break from old decrepit sorcerers. And an hour of quality time and I'll be good for the next three days. Better yet, they won't remember a thing, so they might even stop by again. They won't... oh. They won't even remember that I didn't buy anything! Oh, I'm a cheapskate. Of course, if they run into my three little cousins, there won't be enough of them left to stop by anywhere ever again. Those little fat gluttons. However, what I'd really like to sink my teeth into is succulent and healthy young maiden. Uh, if I kept my appetites limited to small and daily sips, she'd last for decades. Oh, however, she'd also have to be someone that doesn't freak out around the strange and unusual. Be cool, baby. I just want to drink your period blood. Oh. Uh. Blah, I don't need my families. Eccentricities. And eccentricities sending her into screaming hysterics like the last one. In the meantime, I'll have to settle for what's foolish enough to walk right into my house. Blah, breakfast, here I come. Danny's grand slam. A little later. Well, now that my appetite has been attended to. I'm ready to spend a nice, relaxing evening in my cozy little study. What? Not another one? This house is fucking Grand Central Station! He sighed. Damn, I'll just have to spend this one, send this one packing. I'd rather not eat twice in one night. I'm getting fat. Especially since that last one was a porker! Everyone knows too many fatty foods aren't good for you. Ho oh. ho. Who is it? Oh. Count Blasco, I'm your neighbor, Helen Chandler. Oh my god. It's a woman! 
Bellafran, what is a woman doing all the way out here at night? Doesn't she have any sort of survival instincts? Count Blasco, aren't you going to let me in? What should I do? Should I let her in? Oh my god! Yes, idiot, let her in! Of course, won't you please come in? Oh, that's a sexy face. Welcome to my home. Enter freely of your own will and leave some of the happiness you bring. Yeah, you don't want to be too happy in here. Man, this house looks like a dive! Wow, my house is not small by any means, but this place is enormous. Does Edward Scissorhands live here? Please forgive the appearance, Miss Chatler. We had to take, let the downstairs maid go. She was a little too flirty. She wanted to show me her naughty bits. With everyone in the country. <laughs> She's like, I could like all the dicks. Uh, the housekeeping upstairs is far more regular, like my bowels. Hella smiled. Uh, I've had a problem with one or two maids like that myself. So many sluts. Miss Chandler, you said that you're my neighbor. Please forgive me, but I don't recall that I have any neighbors. Certainly not any that look as delicious as this. She laughed. Ah! Actually, actually, you do. I live straight down the road from you, in fact. First big house on the right. The Chance Estate. Bella blinked. The Chance Estate? Oh, wait. You mean the big... Lady in Manor House, about a mile down the road from here. That's not Greek Revival. That's the one. Bella blinked. I guess you are my neighbor, Miss Chandler. I am indeed, and please call me Helen. Riveting. Very well then, Helen, call me Bella. Bella Big Balls. <laughs> Boom! That's my rapper name. Rapper vampire coming at you. Coming in you. Oh, I meant... Meant to mention this earlier, but the music is lovely. Is that Chopin? Bella wrote his eyes. That is indeed Chopin. His etude number one and my uncle Chaney on the piano. Your uncle's a very gifted pianist. I pee very well too, thank you. He is very gifted. However, I play the piano. <laughs> He's more than a little eccentric too. Helen, would you like to take a stroll through the garden? This way you can tell me why you have come to visit. Oh, yes, of course. Can I see your shrubbery? Uh, please pardon the fact that the garden is a bit overgrown. We have a pair of groundkeepers, but... Hey, it's, uh... Uh... Uh, Abbott Costello, dude. One of them isn't particularly bright. Good help is hard to find, especially in this economy. Tell me about it. Well, with the house this large, he smiled, the upkeep can literally be murder! Oh, that was a good one. Helen smiled. I'm discovering that myself. Ever since I inherited the Chandler estate, the estate is so large, my Uncle Edward is staying with me to help me manage the property. I hope she's evil in the end. This house is so much bigger than mine. Are you here with your family? Bella rolled his eyes. No, they are here with me. I don't live with my parents. They live with me, whether I like it or not. <clears throat> As Count, I'm currently the head of the entire family. The house came with the titles my father, through my father's line, though that was a long time ago. May I ask which relatives are staying with you? You don't mind, do you? Noisy little package, isn't she? Not that I mind, since she looks so delicious. What a shame I've already dined. No, I don't mind. Well, there's Uncle Cheney, whom you've heard. He lives here because my house can actually fit his full-sized organ. Uncle Cheney's like, my organ's huge, bitch! <laughs> In addition to his piano and harpsichord. Your Uncle Cheney sounds like quite an accomplished musician. <laughs> Bella nodded. Oh, he is. He's just a little insane and difficult to work with. I mean, he stays in the East Wing most of the time. And then there are my other uncles, Uncle Vincent, Uncle Boris, and Uncle Peter. Peter. <laughs> Their interests tend to fall into sorcery, the esoteric, so they're rather eccentric. They tend to keep the north wing. The walls are sturdier there, because they're fat. And then there are my three younger cousins, Dorothy, Geraldine, and Cornelia. 
They're here on enforced holiday from school. The brats got themselves suspended. It seems that the fondness for arachnids wasn't appreciated by the guidance counselor. Mainly because they used their webbing to tack him to the classroom ceiling for an entire night. Excellent. They prefer to stay in the southern wing with direct access to the crypts where they can indulge in their hobby of spinning, webbing, and eating what they catch. Ugh, to their heart's content. Helen frowned. I hope your cousins weren't hurt by the counselors. Lack of appreciation? Oh, not at all. In fact, they found it quite amusing. A little too amusing. Oh, and a few students from the university where my uncle Boris is an alumni, alumni are staying in the North Tower. Wow. <laughs> They're working on some sort of science project. Though they don't seem to be making much progress at the moment, it seems that they're missing an important little piece of their puzzle. Like the Scarecrow? My goodness, you have quite a household. It seems that way, but in a house this large and me being out all day, out cold, it's pretty easy to miss seeing anyone for days on end. Ha, as if my family would let me even have one hour without complaint about something, cranky bastards! <laughs> so this is the real life of a vampire. He's really like, oh, my family's a pain in the ass. So what brings you to my home? Oh yes, I'm having a small party on my estate, and I'm here to invite you. Bella frowned. In person? You could have mailed an invitation. Oh, but I did. Don't you remember? You wrote me back asking to come and invite you in person. Uh-oh. I suspect subterfuge by someone else. Bella's frowned deep, and I don't remember any such. He stopped and rolled his eyes. My uncles! They're probably behind this. They're up during the day, so they'll get the mail before I do. <laughs> what the... I like the concept that the vampire's like, oh fuck, I can't be out during the day because of the sunlight and my idiot uncles are going to get the mail. Your uncles? They think I don't get out enough. My guess is they wrote you asking you specifically to visit to ensure that I'd accept your invitation. Oh, then you'll definitely come. If I'm lucky. Bella blinked. Wait, did I say that? Hmm, let me think a moment. Should I go to this motherfucking house party? Will Kid and Play be there? Hell yeah, we're going to a house party! He shook his head and smiled. It's only a house party, what can hurt? If you insist. Helen smiled. I insist, I definitely insist. Bella bowed slightly. Then come to your house party, I shall. It will be off the hook. Excellent. Now that that's all settled, I guess it's time to say goodnight. Goodnight. Bella put on a wild smile. Oh, leaving so soon? She's only been grilling me about who lives in my house for an almost a full hour. Man, this guy is more angsty than any of the angsty people I've played in games. I'm afraid so. I still have a lot of preparations to finish for the party. That reminds me. When exactly is this house party? Oh, I forgot. Didn't you see the original invitation? It's tomorrow night at night. I hope you didn't have any plans. Bella shook his head. Not for tomorrow night. Not any night, actually. I have no friends. Other than to attend your lovely party. Wonderful, then I guess I'll see you tomorrow night at 9. I guess you shall. Gonna get my party on vampire motherfucking party. Chapter 2, in which there is a party. Alright, everyone, the coach is ready and I'm leaving for the party. All requests for my assistance will summarily be ignored until I return. If you run into any problems, too fucking bad. You'll have to deal with them on your own, motherfuckers. The same goes for any intruders. Deal with them at your discretion. However, I refuse to be held accountable for the consequences of said discretion. For pity's sake, please think before you act. I like how put a Bonnie is. I love the author who wrote this. We are we clear? Are we? Are we? Are you wearing clean underwear? I can't do his voice. This guy's got an awesome voice if you look it up, but I can't do it. What? Of course! Do you see the clean and pressed suit? Do you not, Uncle Peter? Yes, I see that, but. <laughs> Did you remember to put condoms in your wallet? Right. Uncle Vincent! Uncle. Uncle Vincent, this is a house party. What would I have those for? Just because it's a house party doesn't mean that you won't, you know, indulge in the sexy. Uncle Vincent! Bella took several deep breaths. Uncle Vincent, when I indulge, that's not how I do it. Uncle Peter? Uncle Peter frowned. Bella, you do know that there's another reason to be, be, be with a woman beyond dining, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> they gotta explain it to a fucking vampire in the birds and the bees. Yes, Uncle Peter, I am not a virgin! I haven't been for quite some time now! You are going to at least flirt with a girl, aren't you? Yes, of course, that's why I'm going! Well, they have bedrooms and houses, so you could easily take the next step and... No, that would be rude. But what if she wants to? If I were to receive a private invitation for a later time, perhaps, but not on a first visit. I am not a vampire slut. That never stopped me. Oh, Uncle <laughs> Vincent. Which is why you haven't been invited to a party in 15 years. Uncle Peter burst into a cackling laughter. Oh, does anyone have any serious concerns before I leave? Oh, I do. You said if anything happens, we're to deal with it. I did indeed, Uncle Boris. Oh, it's Boris Karloff. I wish I could do a Grinch impression. Patience, don't leave me now. Well, what if those students in the North Tower do something that blows up the castle? Well, Uncle Boris, that's a little extreme, isn't it? Those are your students from your alma mater, Boris. Bella took another se series of deep breaths. Is that supposed to be a legitimate question, Uncle Boris? Uncle Boris nodded. Yes. <laughs> Very well, then. If your students blow up my castle, I will deal with it when I get home. And by dealing with it, I mean I will simply go buy a new one and move there away from you morons. But I like this castle. You're not going to repair it? <laughs> Bella smiled sourly. No, I will not repair it. The castle's already in a severe state of disrepair. It would be easier and cheaper to move to a new one. I want to go to this party. Oh, I don't like it. I want to stay here. <laughs> then I suggest, Uncle Boris, that you make sure your scientists do not blow up my castle. What a cold-hearted boy. <laughs> Are we done? Are we fucking done? Can I go now? Cousin Bella? Yes, Cornelia? Don't forget to compliment Lady Helen's appearance. And smile, cousin. Your hair is so handsome when you smile. Oh, handsome. Well, no one could do it. Cousin Bella's figuratively speaking, not literally. I will do my best. Uh, are you trying to tell me something, cousins? Yes, do we want you to have a good time. <sighs> Too many voices. And could you, you could use a little romance in your life, Cousin Bella. What, do I look lonely or something? No, you look... Don't look lonely, but... It's just that you've been busy taking care of us all. It's pretty obvious that you could really use the break, you know? Honestly, Cousin Bella, you could use a regular girlfriend to help you relax. And I don't mean one of those mesmerized dolls you tend to play with you. I mean a real girlfriend, one you can talk to, not just play with. Bella checked a little. Oh, I get it, I get it. I promise I will try to have a little fun. Blah! He looked sharply over at his uncle's... With my clothes on! The uncles collectively groaned in obvious disappointment. Oh, I wanted to hear about him getting his dick wet. Me too. <laughs> now seriously, it's time for me to go. I'll be back before dawn, so no need for that, okay? That reminder. Go on, get out of here, you brat. Oh, and are you taking the fancy coach, Cousin Bella? Hell no! It's much too prissy! <laughs> it's not prissy, it's just decorative! The regular coach looks like it's gonna fall apart. The regular coach is not going to fall apart! I just had the damn thing maintenance! I didn't say it was gonna fall apart, I said it looks like it's going to fall apart. No, I'm not taking the prissy coach! Anyway, the horses are already harnessed to the regular coach! So that's that! Anyway, well... I want to hear all about the party when you get back, so make sure you pay attention to everything and everything. I never leave the house. The other two cousins nod in firm agreement, and all the girls smile. Bella smiled. I will. He abruptly frowned. Does anyone know where Uncle Cheney is? The cousins and the uncles all shook their heads in the negative. Bella sighed. Can someone please keep an eye on Uncle Cheney while I'm gone? And before you ask, Uncle Boris, yes, I already hid the Tokata and the Fugue. Again. Well, watch out for Uncle Cheney. Don't worry. Just go. You'll be late. Well, we'll watch out. Thank you, Cordelia. Thank you. Everyone, don't cause any more trouble than you have to. I'm away. So, flying down the stairs. Family, I wonder, does anyone else have to deal with this sort of madness? 
More irons! There's the ca ca coach that looks like he's gonna fall apart. Mother Knight! I thought they'd never leave. As it is, I should only be 15 minutes late. Fashionably late, as it were. Oh, and I'll have to remember to use my company manners. No whipping my dong out. The chance estate. Well, here I am. I hope this doesn't turn out to be a huge mistake. Okay, here I go. Hello, knock knock. Who wants some cock? Oh, hello, you must be Count Blasco. Welcome to the Chance Estate. Thank you for your kind invitation. I am indeed Count Blasco. I'm Edward Van Sloan, Helen's uncle. Good of you to come, good indeed. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr. Sloan. Van Sloan, you're Dutch? Oh, no need to be so formal, just call me Ed. Bella bowed slightly. Thank you for your kindness, Ed. Can I take your cape for you? Oh, Bella, you're here! It's getting romantic. Good to see you again, Helen. You look utterly delicious. Crap! I mean, lovely tonight, my dear. Play it cool, Bella. Play it cool. Then on the third date, you might be able to look at the bosom. Hella laughed cheerfully. Ha! Ah, thank you, Bella, though I must say I don't mind being called delicious. Would you like to eat me? Oh, I didn't mean it. I didn't. It. I might have. I didn't. It. She bashed, batted her eyelashes just a little. Whore! Gutter tramp! Batting your eyelashes. Thank you so much for coming, even though it was such short notice. I love to come on short notice. That's all I do. Oh, Count, may I offer you something to drink? My apologies, but I do not drink spirits. It does bad things to my temperament. Understatement of the century, I'll never forgive Uncle Vincent for getting me drunk so soon after I lost my mortality. The retaining wall in the East Wing is still unstable. Oh my, who, oh, another person? I'm guessing this is a woman. Oh my, who's your handsome friend, Helen? Oh, it's dude. <laughs> oh my, who's your handsome friend, Helen? Bella blinked. What did he just call me? Oh, Kent Blasco, this is David Manners, a family friend. Friend of the family, huh? Not impressed. Even so, Bella bowed slightly to be polite. A pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr. Manners. David blinked. Oh, wow, what a neat accent. Where are you from, Blasco? Your voice is like mine. Let me change this. Oh, uh, wow, what a neat accent. Where are you from, Blasco? How cre crude. I'm really not impressed. I'm originally from Romania. I doubt this idiot even knows where that is. It's a small country of steep mountains and dark forests and poverty in Eastern Europe. David frowned. Ha, huh, never heard of it. Thought so. Oh, but you have, David. Romania is known as Transylvania. Oh, really? Wow! That's cool! Actually, Transylvania is merely a portion of Romania, rather like a province. Oh, so Count, are you a vampire? I got something you can suck. Ha <laughs> ha What the... David, how could you? That was rude and completely uncalled for. I'm going to have to agree with Helen. It's time to judge you, Mr. Manners, and your manners are found lacking. That was a rather rude question, David. David went, I was just asking. Come on. Does this idiot actually know something, or did he j ask that because the country I come from and that infernal book by Stoker? Apologize, David. I mean it. <laughs> Fine. Sorry about that, Count. No hard feelings, huh? Except for the one in my pants. Oh, what? No. What the? What was that? Was that supposed to be an apology? <laughs> you just dug your grave a little deeper, David. Well, I apologize, didn't I? Uncle Ed, did you have to invite David to my party? Awkward. Well, I could have just. Well, I could have. He probably shook his head. You have my deepest apologies for David's rudeness, Helen, and you also count. I love how the old man is like, right in front of David. I'm sorry I invented this moron. Or inv invited, not invented. <coughs> Ridiculous. That brat should be making his own apologies. Bella cleared his throat to gain everyone's attention. <coughs> Mr. Manners, if you allow me, I shall put your ill-conceived question into perspective. Uh, okay. Big words. You have no idea what I just said, do you? Good. Shall we begin? 
Mr. Manners, if I were a vampire, which I am, those rather dangerous whose rather dangerous secret you just carelessly exposed to people I barely know, which you did, what do you think I would have to do to remedy the situation? David's face lost on color. Um, come on, wipe that dust off your brain and think. What would a dangerous predator normally do when threatened? I guess you'd have to uh, kill me? Bella manfully held back the... Manfully held back the laughter he's so desperately wanted to spout. Took you long enough to figure that out. Not used to thinking that hard, are you, moron? This is the internal dialogue, because it's not quotations. Helen, on the other hand, wasn't able to stifle her giggles. <laughs> Bella took a deep, calming breath. Well, Mr. Man, as I suppose killing you is one solution to the problem. Why not rub some salt in that wound while we're at it? And if I were a vampire, which I am, I'm quite sure I would know many ways to do so without anyone knowing or even leaving a trace, which I do. However, the real answer to that question is exactly what I'm doing right now, you complete imbecile, utterly destroying what little credence you have left with these people. Score! Anything you say about me will be taken as the ravings of the utter lunatic, otherwise known as damage control, idiot. I destroyed you. I just mind-fucked you. David abruptly smiled, though his face was still pale. Well then, Count, I guess it's a good thing you're not really a vampire, or I might be in real trouble. Bella nodded slightly. Hopefully that was enough to keep the subject of vampires from ever coming, coming up again. Well, Count, vampire or not, you're a damn fine looking good man. What? Or not. More importantly, what is with these compliments? Is he gay? <laughs> David! What now? I just like his man boner. Would you get off the subject of vampires, please? <laughs> She's like, would you get off of my boyfriend? Mr. Manners, excuse me, but are you flirting with me? And if I said yes, I am? Ugh. Why do I keep playing games like this? What? Bella blinked. Oh, he is gay. Well, guys sitting on me is nothing new, especially when I've, fe I've fed enough to look younger. However, the question is, how should I respond to this guy? How dare you say something like that right in front of Helen. Mr. Manners, you normally make passes, I guess, directly in front of your hostess. Huh, what? What has Helen got to do with anything? She invited me over. She obviously has got the hots for the vampire. You're you're like, like he's coming in to swoop away uh, and steal what she's been working on. I see. So being rude is your natural state. Bad! And I've had quite enough of it. How about I scare some respect into you? The human way, of course. Mr. Manners, are you aware that showing such absolute disregard for my hostess would traditionally call for pistols at dawn? Pistols at dawn? What? A duel, Mr. Manners, for the honor of my hostess. That is the traditional way of setting, settling rude behavior amongst gentlemen. Yeah, murder a person. That's much more polite than saying I'm sorry. Oh, my dear Bella. Oh, my dear Bella. I'm not happy at all with David's behavior, but you don't need to kill him. I'm perfectly happy to simply wing him, Helen. A bullet in the arm, that's all. Oh. <laughs> You'd easily survive a bullet in the arm, wouldn't you, Mr. Manners? <laughs> what the hell? I assure you, I'm a crack shot with a dueling pistol. I guarantee I will not miss and shoot you through the heart. Um, can we not do that? The pistols at dawn thing? Oh, that was a nice effect. I can smell his terror sweat all the way over here. Can you make a heartfelt and sincere apology to your hostess for your rude behavior and promise to be on your best manners, Mr. Manners, for the rest of the night at least? Yes, yes, I can. I'd be very happy to. Let's see what his apology is. Then hop to it. I want to see you on bended knee. Yeah. That's, you're going to just turn him on more, Bella. And you'd better make me believe every word you say or I'm calling my house to have my dueling pistols brought here. <laughs> You have a telephone at your house? Oh, you just got burned, Bella. She's like, you have a telephone, old man? <laughs> it's the 1930s, of course I have a telephone, though we had to bring the wires through the windows at 12 feet. The walls are much too thick to drill through. Um, um, Helen? Yes, David? I'm really, really sorry, Helen. For what, David? Good girl, make him say it nice and clear. For I'm being rude to your guest. Mr. Manners, you're supposed to be apologizing for being rude to Helen, not to me. Oh, Bella's being an ass. He's like shoving his nose in it. 
Clearly no one has taken this brat to task for anything, not properly anyway. He rolled his eyes. Here I go again, being the parent to a grown adult. More people, I almost need to say it, more people need to learn how to make sincere apologies. I'm sorry for the games I make you all watch. <laughs> David swallowed visibly. Um, Helen, I'm, I'm really, really sorry for um, being rude and for hitting on your guest in front of you. That's rude. I shouldn't be trying to take the cock you're going after. And? David looked over at Bella in confusion. And? What do you think that was? Do you, uh, ugh. What, what? Did you think that was all you were apologizing for, Mr. Manners? How else have you been rude to Helen? <laughs> what an ass. Um, um, I'm sorry for interrupting your conversations. He looks briefly at Bella. And for um, not thinking before I speak. Very good, very good, Mr. Manners. Now make your promise. David swelled again. Helen, I promise to mind my manners for the rest of the night. Thank you, David. If you can keep this promise, I won't need to ban you from ever attending one of my parties again. Oh, God, this got awkward. One hell of an awkward dinner party. I'll keep it, I swear. Well, I guess we'll see, won't we, David? <laughs> so he's a vampire. He deals with his idiot family. He goes over and teaches somebody manners. This is the kind of vampire story I've never seen before. Good boy, I guess I won't need to call my house for dueling pistols. However, should you break your promise, I'll immediately ask for the telephone. Are we clear? Y yet, yes, sir. Now to address your comment. Allow me to make myself perfectly clear. I have no interest in s so ever in you. So if you would kindly refrain from your flirting, it would be much appreciated. David nodded. Okay, I just wanted... To suck on your dick for a while, man, you know? Good, now that that's been dealt with. Forgive me, Helen, I didn't mean to show you anything than less than my best foot forward, now that I've embarrassed your cousin. Oh, please forgive me, Count. I mean, Bella, David's behavior is... David's up to his old tricks again, is he? Who the fuck is that? Who the hell is this? <laughs> Even Bella's like that. Who the hell is this guy? Obviously not a guest. Not with the way he's dressed. The stable boy? Oh my god, what is he doing here? Definitely not a guest. Dwight Fry, what in the blazes are you doing here? I thought they'd locked you up. What, he's an escaped criminal? I got news for you. The sanatorium, uh, sanitarium's just down the road from here, huh? He's an escaped lunatic? Sounds like most of my family. Just down the road, the sanitarium is 20 miles down the main highway. So what? You ever heard the term hitchhike, old fuck? Anyway, how in blazes did you even get here? He just said he hitchhiked, Uncle Edward. Uh, getting out was easy. As if a high wall and a few guards could keep me locked up. Please. Hey, as long as the largest donated in the sanitar- Hey, as the largest donated to that sanitarium, I paid for that wall and those guards. After all, I've been sending them lunatics for years. One of the hazards of having a family like mine, normal people are often rendered insane. Have to put the results somewhere. And isn't it obvious? I'm here to get my boyfriend. We have a date. Oh, God. Please don't- Please be David. Please be going after David. Please be going after David. Boyfriend? Oh, don't tell me. We do not have a date! We do so. This is Nutshot Manor's boyfriend? All of a sudden, I can see why he's hitting on other guys. Truthfully, though, I can't say I'm surprised by Manor's taste in men. No, we don't. Not tonight, anyway. David, you mean you haven't broke up with that little psychopath yet? Hey, are you, you, you calling me a psychopath? I'm a sociopath! Get it right, man! The only difference between a psychopath and a sociopath is that a sociopath leaves their victims alive. However, in your case, it's only a matter of time before we find the bodies. Let the bodies hit the floor, motherfucker. You'll never find them, believe me. And, and where there are no bodies, there can be no conviction. So there, I win! I'm the best! I'm Dwight! In a human court of law, perhaps, but you should start snooping around my house. I'll show you how I hide bodies, personally and permanently. Hey, who's that guy? Can I touch him? <laughs> Is he looking at me? You're totally hot. How oh, about it? You want to be my boyfriend? Have oh, a good day. Uh, I'll give you a good teeth job. <laughs> no, thank you. Poor Bella. 
Oh, come on, man. Come on, I can be very, very nice to your dick. How dare he get your filthy paws off me? I should strangle the little shit. All of a sudden, Helen seems like the normal one. Uh... Uh, do I strangle him? Yeah, I'm gonna strangle him. What part of no thank you do you not understand? I like how he's still Mr. Manners. No thank you, I do not want a blowjob. <laughs> Count, you're going to kill him. Well, he is turning a rather interesting shade of blue. Hello, that Count? Would everyone be so kind as to look at the other way for a moment? What? No peeking! Whoa! He murdered him at the dinner party? Thank you. We, you have my most sincere apologies for losing my temper. I've called the sanatorium. They said a car with orderlies is already on the way. Apparently Dwight was seen walking this way and they feared he was coming here. He wanted to come all over me, young lady. Very swift thinking, my dear. Thank you, Bella. Um, what happened to him? He fell asleep. <laughs> he should wake up in a few moments or so, possibly. It was amazing how the Count... Oh, isn't the Count dreamy? He beat up my old boyfriend. Maybe he'll be my new boyfriend. Mr. Manners, you shouldn't have peeked. I asked you not to. Right, my apologies, Count. Really, I won't do it again, I swear. Unless you're in the bedroom with Helen. At least his apologies have gotten far more sincere. I suppose the demonstration did him good. All right, I'd forgive you, but please do not disappoint me again. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I won't, sir. <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to get any vagina. Orderly Franks. Oh, God, I'm out of voices. <laughs> I have nothing more. I didn't have that big of a palette to work with. Sorry, folks. Uh, no, I can't do that. Uh, Sorry, folks. But I'm Franks, an orderly from Royal Bethlehem Hospital, North Branch. I'm here to pick up Mr. Fry. Well, that was quick. From Little Bedlam? Yes, Mr. Fry is right there on the floor. You brought restraints, I hope? I did indeed, sir. My goodness, that's a nice bruise he's got on his jaw there. Anyone know how that happened? Seeing as I gotta write up the report and all. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Fry. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Fry fell into my fist. David snickered but said nothing. <laughs> Now then, uh, you, you, up you get, Mr. Fry. Time to get back to your room. We at the hospital offer a sincerest apology for your troubles. I don't want to go. I like that guy. Bye, Dwight. If I may ask, Mr. Franks, how did Dwight escape the hospital? Oh, fuck. It's going to show that Edward's voice and the orderlies are pretty close. <laughs> Orderly Frank sighs. Well, he's been good lately, huh? We let him into the garden after breakfast for a smoke, you see. Without supervision, our voices are the same! <laughs> we had supervision, but we found orderly Darby, Mr. Fry's supervision, out cold by the wall, sir. Dwight narrowed his gaze on Bella. He fell. By then, Mr. Fry had already absconded. I see. I'm sorry the voices aren't the same. I need more voices. I should have got a friend of mine to do some voices. David, I left because you never come see me, David! Why don't you come to see me? It's been three weeks since I've seen you last! Answer the man, David, and tell him the truth. Poor David. What truth, David? I'm, I'm not going to see you anymore, Dwight. It's over. We're done. I'm done with you. David, you're an asshole. When you break up with somebody, you need to at least let them know so they don't hang on forever. Bella wrote his eyes. How d melodramatic. Not to mention unoriginal. I heard those exact lines last week in the theater drama. Only, I believe, it was the actress that said them. What? Because I'm seeing somebody else, Dwight. And you're still trying to hit on Bella? Who who are you seeing instead of me? He turned to glare at Bella. Is it him? Certainly not. Ew. Blah. He's dirty. Go ahead and tell him, David. But, but... You owe him the truth. Tell him. Quit being a cock nozzle. All right. I'm seeing Edward. Oh, you're seeing your uncle? Wait, I hope... I, wait, I, I hope you're not a part of the family. I hope you're a friend and I got that wrong. You must be joking. This man's clearly over 50. Wait, so... He came to Helen's party. 
Hit on this other guy in front of the person he's dating. My uncles make certain energy potions to make up for their lack, but they're sorcerers. Edward is not. Ew, he means boner medications. You're lying. You must be lying. Uncle Edward, is that true? Are you boning this person that I hope is not related to me? Yes, it's true. I'm involved with David. I put my wrinkly wiener in his buttocks. It's good. Now, I'll admit, I'm a bit of a pharmacist. I have a bit of pharmaceutical assistance from your Uncle Peter. Ah, oh, Count, which is how we came to know about you. Uh, I see, I see. Uncle Peter gave Edward one of his potions, his boner tonic. Without explaining how he's able to get it unk, Uncle Peter's potions are particularly potent, but still. David, with Edward, you really expect me to believe that? You're insane! Look who's talking. <laughs> Well, Dwight, you dumped me a half dozen times for other guys. Now I'm dumping you. You can't do this to David. To me, David, you love me. I did, but it's been over for a long time now. I've moved on to wrinkly, saggy old man balls. It's time for me to move on. There he goes, quoting that play again. Mr. Franks, I think it's time for Mr. Fry to go home. Yes, sir. We'll come along then, Mr. Fry. It's time to go home. David, you can't do this to me! You love me too much, David! Good night, Dwight, and goodbye. Make sure you lock him up good and tight, Mr. Franks. That's what David and I do to each other. Oh, oh we will. Oh, wait, that's the wrong voice. Oh, we will, sir. Absolutely, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's go home now, Mr. Fry. You're very late for supper, you know. I don't want to go, David! I'll get the door for you. That would be most generous, sir. David, are you alright? What? David's the one who fucked this guy over by leading him on and not breaking up with him. Yes, I just need to get out on the patio and have a smoke, if that's alright. Smoke some bones, you mean? Of course, David. Take as much time as you need. All of a sudden, Bella was left alone in the drawing room with Helen. He's like, it's about time that sausage factory left. The clock ticked on the mantel as a strange suspicion began to grow in Bella's mind. Helen, my dear, I can't help but notice that I seem to be the only actual guest at your party. It wasn't on purpose, I assure you. I don't have any friends. My best friend from school, Francis Dade, was supposed to come by with a close friend of hers. In fact, they should have arrived shortly after you did. I wonder what's keeping her. Bella sighed. Unfortunately, it's getting rather late. You're leaving? I'm afraid I must. I still have vampire paperwork I must complete before seeking my rest. Not a lie, I have business reports that need seeing to. Not to mention a call to the sanatorium to make about increasing security. Even though it wasn't all that much of a party, I'm so glad you came. May I ask, will I see you again? Bella blinked. Well, someone is certainly forward. Not that I really mind. My dear Helen, you may see me tomorrow night if you like. We can go for a drive. And I'll sneak a sip from your pretty throat while I'm at it. You won't miss half a pint, really, because you won't remember that it happened. Helen smiled. I think I'd like that. Bella smiled right back. What time would you like me to collect you? How about eight? Eight o'clock it is. He kissed her fingers. The fragrance of the fragrance of the blood racing below her fragile skin rushed straight to his head. Holy crap! She smells good. Too good! He stepped back hastily. Until tomorrow, Helen, dear. Woo-hoo! I've got a date tomorrow with the sweetest blood I've ever smelled! Score! What a fucking night! However, I wouldn't call what I just witnessed a party. That was a freaking soap opera, man! That left side, blonde! Sadly, my cousins will be thrilled. Back at the castle. Um, I will take this up next time. Chapter 3 in which someone has a problem.